Hi guys, welcome back to the Player YouTube channel. And today, well, this car needs no introduction. This is the Jaguar F-Type, and it's not just any F-Type. This is the Jaguar SVR. Let's get it out on the road, let's take it for a bit of fun, and then let's get it back and have a look around it and see if it's value for money at 118,000 pounds. There you go guys, we're arriving back now at the wonderful Hanbury Manor. Let's take a look around the car and see how well it's actually put together. Well, one of the first things you're gonna notice up the front is this fabulous splitter that comes on the, the very lower part of the car there and it's all designed to draw all of that air that's hitting it when it's going at speed through this very large vent here, which in turn passes over these 20 inch forged alloys allowing that lovely red brake caliper there to cool down and then expelling the hot air through here underneath that beautiful Jaguar sign there. I mean, the attention to detail is absolutely fantastic. Even on the bonnet, they've got these wonderful vents that allow that huge five litre engine to get, get rid of that heat that's built up underneath. The Xenon headlights here at the front with a signature running LED down the side just finish the whole thing off and in black, it just looks amazing. Okay, let's take a look under the bonnet. Now, it's very easy just to reach in here, and there we go. And like all Jaguars, this one lifts very easily in the reverse way. And I love this, because it's so much like your proper old school racing cars. Well, this is the business end of the car, and my God, what a piece of business. This is a supercharged V8 five litre engine and it develops around 575 brake horsepower with the addition of 700 newton metres of torque. Put all that together with a decent eight speed gearbox and you will get 0 to 60 sub 3.5 seconds, if you can hang on to it, and a top speed of 195 miles an hour. The coupe, the one with the roof, that does a 201 miles an hour because it has a better drag efficiency. It's just an amazing piece of kit and my God, does it sound nice. Let's get around the back and see if you can actually put anything in the boot on this car. Round at the back, wow, doesn't that look stunning? I mean, it's just so beautifully built. Let's start down at the bottom. You've got these uh, four exhausts here. Now these on this SVR are titanium, which makes them about 13 and a half kilos lighter. Uh, you get this really nice carbon fiber wing, which you can adjust mechanically, electronically from inside the car. So it's up like this for more downforce, or if you want more straight line speed, it can drop almost flat. Inside, well, there's no assisted tail lift, but who needs it? There's not much room in here, but there is enough room to get two sets of golf clubs and a decent weekend bag in there. Um, there's also one other little thing, which we'll put a little what we call B-roll in so you can see it. Um, this is what I call the anti-kidnap button. Inside here, there's actually a glow-in-the-dark lever that you can pull that will release the bonnet. So if you do get kidnapped and thrown in the back here, I mean, it's going to be really tight. You will be able to open this when you get to a set of traffic lights, lift that up and leg it, and you'll be all right. So whoever thought of that, well done. You always need an anti-kidnap button. Um, let's get round, jump inside, take a look what tech and other bits and pieces that Jaguar have put on the lovely 
F-Type SBR. Here we are up front and wow, what a lovely place to be. Let's talk about the seats first of all. These are quilted leather and I love this red. They're fully electrically adjustable over here on the side, which makes it very easy to find the absolute perfect place to sit. Likewise, this steering wheel, which is adjusted electronically on the column here, is also very easy to set up the way you want it. This particular steering wheel has the Alcantara and the leather and it's an extra 580 pounds. I think it's worth it, it's a very nice steering wheel. Another central piece here, which is also an extra, is this carbon sort of fascia that they've put on the actual finish here and that's another 580 pounds extra. We'll talk about those bits in a minute. Um, one thing I do love are the red seat belts in this car. And again, they're 160 pounds extra but I think they're worth it, quite like red seat belts. Let's take a look at the car itself, what we've got for our money. Well, we do get a proper dashboard on this. In the center here, it is totally digital. Left and right is still analog, but I quite like that. It's a keyless ignition, so we'll put our foot on the brake and we'll push the start button and that lovely V8 roars into life. Steering wheel goes back to its memory position. You have the memories over here as well you can set up so if you do allow the other half to drive this car on occasion perhaps when you've had one or two vodkas too many then she can push or he can push his memory button but really i wouldn't have them drive it that often so lovely so here in the center this is adjusted on the left hand side with the menu button here so you've got left right up and down you've also got a voice command button and you can control the telephone system from here you can scroll through the modes as well on the right, you've got the speed limiter and you've got your cruise control. So it's all very simple, easy setup. Two lovely paddles here that are attached to the steering wheel, not to the steering column. We like that. On the left here are your lights and on the right are your indicators. Very, very simple indeed. Now, this is where there is a little bit of a problem because this lovely 10 inch TFT touchscreen here is fantastic when the roof is up but the minute the sun comes out like it is now, you can hardly see anything. It really is that bad. And likewise on the heating control systems here, you just have to guess. So once you get it to a temperature you like, you can just leave it. So you know that's yours and that's your passengers and the centerpiece is either auto if you push it or you manually adjust the air. Um, underneath, well, simple buttons, auto air con, air con on and off, recirculate hazards in the middle and then you've got your front and rear demisters. This has an eight speed auto gearbox. We'll talk about that when we get out on the road. To the right of the gearbox here, we have three different modes. If you push the button upwards like that, it activates, you can see it here on the screen, it will activate rain, snow and ice mode. And that puts this car into all wheel drive because this SVR is an all wheel drive version. Uh, the second one down is your manual mode, disengages the snow and ice mode and the next button down which lights up and you probably heard the exhaust change note is the dynamic mode which is basically Jaguar's version of sport mode and that pretty much you can set up everything on the screen here how you want dynamic mode. So there is an additional individual mode as well but it still comes under the dynamic mode. Down here we have the auto stop engine button which is so annoying when you get to the traffic lights and it shuts it off. Um, I always have that turned off anyway, there's no point. It's supposed to save, I don't know, fuel on this. <laughs> Why are you saving fuel? We'll talk about economy when we get out because there's no saving fuel on this car, trust me. This is the rear wing adjustment here so it's either up like we said to give more downforce or push again and it will go almost flat to give you the extra speed. Here is my snap, crackle, pop button, also known as the Rice Krispie button. Um, so basically that one changes the pitch. So if you want to be nice to your neighbors, it's a neighbor friendly exhaust button. So when you start up in the morning, if you turn that, it goes quiet and you don't upset your neighbors. But if you want to be a real pain in the backside, just put it on and then they'll hear you leaving no matter how early it is. Traction control on the left there, I only suggest you turn that one off when you get on the track, because out on the road that could prove fatal, given the amount of power that's going through the wheels on this car. In the center here, a double cup holder. Perfect, does the job. And underneath here, a tiny cubby box with a 12 volt adapter and two USB ports, which to be honest, 
is a complete waste of time, but at least it houses those. You wouldn't even get your, well, it's probably meant for the keys, so we'll put them in there. All in all, well, the car is superbly comfortable. It's engineered and designed to either be on the track or to do some really lovely long journeys out on the road like a good GT. I love driving it, so let's say no more about this and get it out on the road stick on that Meridian sound system, listen to some tunes. It does have Bluetooth that links up with your phone, just to let you know. And get out, let's go do it. So it's a beautiful summer's day. It's a beautiful car. And we're a better place to be than out on the road. And even if you haven't really got anywhere in particular you wanna go, it's just nice to head out and have a drive of this car around the country lanes, which is where this car feels most at home, in my opinion. It's got a superb chassis on it. It steers so well and everything is in the right place. All that power is controlled by a limited slip differential. And to be honest, I was expecting it to be very, very leery. Leery meaning it's gonna be, you know, jumping all over the place and throwing me all over the place. But believe it or not, it really isn't. It's, um, it's a very, very sort of, well, it makes a lot of noise, but it's almost like, one of those uh, type of dogs that's all bark and, and no bite, if that makes sense. However, if you do decide to uh, take off the stability control, yes, then it will bite you in the backside. Um, and I think that's just inevitable, so beware of that. But once all the electronic stabilisation is done, it's just a beautiful car to drive. One, it's, it's very stable, but two, everything about it suggests safety and commitment from the actual car itself to ensuring that it gets around a bend rather than throws you into a bend if that all makes sense the car isn't that economical but then hey you don't buy one of these because you're worried how much it costs to fill up the fuel tank let's be honest if you're spending 120 grand on a car like this don't worry about putting 50 pounds worth of petrol in and then just burning it up by putting it into manual and doing stuff like that because that is just worth a pound of my fuel any day of the week just to hear that engine just roar it just ah oh, listen to that engine it's just ridiculous it's like a bunch of angry wasps up inside. um so economy wise forget it jaguar say 25 ish to the gallon bah not in a million years guys you might make about 16 17 and around town probably about eight or nine and if you keep doing what i just did then that will go even lower you basically need a petrol tanker following you around um the car well i, I cannot fault it it's comfortable it's powerful it's just what it says on the tin it, you cannot fault this car it's superb eight speed gearbox with a manual and the flappy paddles love it all day long love to drive one of these in a manual i bet that is pretty hairy because this is quite simple it's a bit like a electronic you know one of these games um and i've never really been a big fan of uh, flappy paddles i love a good old manual car and this sort of my way of thinking is it deserves a manual gearbox price wise 92 grand entry level f type 92 i beg your pardon 52 that's more like it, isn't it? 52,000 pounds will get you an F-Type. It'll get you on the ladder. And then you can work your way up. The one below this is the R-Design. It's a fantastic car, um, but you can't beat the SVR. This, you know, Jaguar have come out with a range of SVRs. They're in all their cars now. Um, and the, they're primar primarily based around the V8 engines. And you just cannot beat a Jaguar V8 engine. Before I sum this car up, another pounds worth of petrol well worth every penny <laughs> you mean what you mean aj the player thank you so much for watching don't forget like comment and subscribe and if you want to see next week's car which is a bmw z4 m sport then subscribe and click the button with the little bell on it and it will come back up every week and let you know when we put a new video up if you don't want to do that just check back next week and hopefully it will be up within a week Thanks for watching again, guys. Safe driving. Catch up with you ne next week.